kind of going on between secular nationalism represented by Nasser and uh, radical fundamentalism, Islamic fundamentalism represented by Saudi Arabia then as now. And the United States and Britain have traditionally supported Islamic fundamentalism and opposed radical nationalism. It was true, it's true, true in many places, but it was particularly true in this case. And this was of enormous significance because the radical nationalism of Nasser, whatever one thinks of him, uh, carried with it the threat that uh, secular nationalist, the secular nationalist Arab forces might appropriate the resources, their own resources for their own purposes. And that's impermissible. Those are our resources. That's official in U.S. policy. Leading policymakers describe uh, the resources of the world as our resources, which by accident happen to be somewhere else. And uh, people are not illegitimately allowed to take our resources, which happen to be under their soil, uh, for their ends. And that's what secular nationalism threatened to do. Uh, uh, Islamic fundamentalism was going to be susceptible, they assumed, to U.S. power as it remains in, in Saudi and Saudi Arabia and the Gulf. That one of the charges against Iran is that they're no longer living by that principle. But that's an, another unacceptable uh, move. Well, in any event, uh, uh, in 1967, Israel essentially destroyed the uh, central elements of uh, secular nationalism and protected Saudi Arabia uh, uh, from the Nasserite threat and the Gulf generally. And it's at that point that U.S. relations with Israel shifted. Prior to that, they were friendly but more or less normal. Uh, after that, they became unique. There's nothing like it in, in the global system. And that remains true today. Uh, U.S. aid to Israel shot up. Uh, in American public opinion, in the media, and in the intellectual community, uh, a love affair started with Israel, which before that had not received that much attention or interest. And that persists to the present. That's also a significant force in policy making. Uh, that's why media coverage is so grossly distorted uh, up till today. Uh, in 1970, uh, Israel performed another service. Uh, this had to do with the Palestinians and Jordan. Uh, in 1970, as you remember, Jordanian forces crushed uh, Palestinians, Black September. And that was, again, a major victory for the United States and Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Palestinian movement was considered to be a threat to the Hashemite kingdom, but indirectly to Saudi Arabia. And uh, is, is, the United States was not in a, uh, Syria. It looked for a moment as if Syria was going to intervene during Black September to protect the Palestinians. The U.S. certainly didn't want that. But it was completely tied down in Southeast Asia at that time and couldn't do anything. So it asked Israel to mobilize its forces and threaten Saudi Arabia with a, Syria with attack uh, if they made a move and Syria backed off and uh, everything worked out fine. Uh, and the U.S. aid to Israel uh, practically quadrupled in 1970. It gained its position as uh, what the Nixon administration called, it was in power then, called a cop on the beat. It was the local policeman, the local gendarme. Uh, the picture was that uh, the what has to be protected is uh, Gulf oil, and that has to be pre and the the ruling uh, powers have to be protected from their own populations, and that requires a police force, and the police force was made up of surrounding non-Arab countries. Uh, one was Iran, then under the Shah, so loyal. Another was Turkey. In other words, Pakistan, and now Israel joined the group and became a leading member of the uh, cops on the beat, the local policemen. The police headquarters, of course, is in Washington, and there's a kind of a branch office in London, and that's roughly the structure of how to control the energy resources of the region that more or less remains so. Slight changes. Uh, the... Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Israel was facing choices. It now controlled uh, uh, all of Palestine and also the Sinai. Uh, and Israel made a very fateful decision in 1971, which has kind of disappeared from history, but it's extremely important. I think it's the most important decision in 
Israel's history and the United States and the Middle East. Uh, in 1971, uh, President Sadat of Egypt, who had recently come into office, uh, uh, offered a full peace treaty to Israel. F full peace treaty. Nothing for the Palestinians. This is before Palestinian nationalism had entered uh, the international arena. So nothing for the Palestinians. Full peace treaty uh, would end the major, any security problems for Israel with Egypt out of the picture and no Palestinians. Uh, there was, in return, Israel was to withdraw to its uh, borders. Now, actually, Sadat didn't care much about the West Bank. He put in the words, but he didn't care. Uh, what he cared about was the Sinai. So he wanted Israel to withdraw from the Sinai. Now, at that time, Israel was initiating major settlement programs in the northeastern Sinai. Uh, they were planning to build a huge city, the city of Yamit, uh, on, on, on the Mediterranean in the Sinai, a lot of settlements at Kibbutzim. And Israel had to decide, do we want security or do we want expansion? It's a crucial decision. Uh, they could have had complete security and nothing for the Palestinians. Uh, or they could expand, at that time mainly into the Sinai, the settlement in the West Bank was also beginning. Uh, and they made the decision to prefer expansion. Well, the crucial question is always is how would the United States respond? That's the godfather. So what's he going to do? And if you look back, there was a conflict uh, within the U.S. government between essentially the State Department, which wanted to accept Sadat's offer, uh, which was pretty much in line with official U.S. policy, and uh, Henry Kissinger, who was the National Security Advisor, and his main goal in life at that time was to take over the State Department. His main enemy in the world was uh, William Rogers, the Secretary of State. The Russians were much lower in the priority list. Uh, so if Rogers said it's raining, Kissinger would say the sun's shining. Uh, well, Rogers was in favor of Sadat's uh, uh, offer, and uh, Kissinger explained in his memoirs that he was in favor of what he called stalemate, meaning no negotiations, just force. And Kissinger won out in the internal debate, and the U.S. backed Israel's choice of uh, expansion over security. Now, with various changes, that pretty much remains true until today. Uh, right through this period, Israel and the United States could have had the choice of security, as they can now, but have preferred expansion. And that's the live issue right at this moment. This is a theme which persists with various changes. And I won't go through the uh, full details, but uh, what happened, as you know, is that uh, uh, Sadat uh, made further offers. He withdrew the Russian advisors. He made all sorts of appeals to the United States, uh, but he was just dismissed with contempt. It was a period of extreme arrogance, both in Israel and the United States. They thought Arabs don't know which end of a gun hold and can dismiss them. Uh, very racist, in fact, if you look back. Uh, there's good literature on it. The uh, uh, 19, and uh, Sadat kept saying uh, if his phrase was Yamit means war. If Israel continues to expand into the Sinai, there'll be a war. Nobody took him seriously. And then came the 1973 war, which was a very close thing for Israel. And both Israel and the United States recognized that they could not just dismiss Egypt. And then you begin the Kissinger's um, shuttle diplomacy. It ends up in Camp David. And finally, at Camp David in 1978-79, uh, the U.S. essentially accepted Sadat's 1971 offer. Uh, that's considered in the U.S. Uh, sort of picture of affairs as a great diplomatic triumph. Actually, it was a diplomatic disaster. Uh, they rejected an offer in 1971. They accepted it after a major war and uh, suffering and destruction and so on, and finally they accepted it. That's a diplomatic disaster. But in writing history, you don't say that your your lords made, had a, made a mistake. That's not done. Uh, so it's a triumph. 